Davion Mitchell is seeing his draft stock rise late in the process after an impressive junior season at Baylor. But is the hype warranted? This is Florence Ceiling. Let's break him down. Davion Mitchell ended his junior season at Baylor by becoming national champions with the Bears. But another thing he also accomplished is boosting his draft stock. In a span of just a few years, Mitchell went from unknown Auburn transfer to Naismith Defensive Player of the Year. Keep in mind that he also averaged 14 points per game. At 6'2", Mitchell might seem small, but he has a strong 205 pound frame. Coupled with his athleticism, dynamic driving, and playmaking, Mitchell has emerged as a real option for teams in the top 10 of the 2021 NBA Draft. Davion Mitchell at his best is an absolute freight train. Despite his slight stature at 6'2", Mitchell is built powerfully. His 205 pounds can explode to the rim on a dime because Mitchell knows how to use his elite athleticism. Mitchell is equipped with one of the strongest first steps in this year's NBA Draft. When he turns his entire body left and just goes, he is incredibly difficult to stay in front of. Often, he will hit his defender with a slight hezzy before attacking the rack. Mitchell can then either finish or get fouled. Usually, Mitchell is still more of a right-handed finisher despite his willingness to go left, but he has shown some flashes in terms of staying on that side and finishing with a scoop layup. Really, it is easy to imagine Mitchell getting downhill in an NBA setting. He already did this well during his junior season at Baylor. His finishing percentage of 65% is good but improvable. However, Mitchell got the most shots at the rim of anyone on his team. He can clearly get into the lanes consistently, but as I will break down later, his finishing could still use some adjustments. Still, the flashes are evident. Watch here against Iowa as Mitchell brings up the ball, changes directions on the behind the back, and finishes through contact. In terms of his outside shot, Mitchell defied expectations in his junior season at Baylor. Prior to this year, Mitchell had been a subpar 3-point shooter, making only 29 and then 32% in his respective first two years. Then, Mitchell made 45% of his triples to lead Baylor to a national championship. At times, Mitchell showed some really appealing flashes. He can get into his three suddenly and creatively. Either he stops and pulls up on a whim, or he can get into his shot coming out of sidesteps or step backs. 40% of Mitchell's three-pointers were unassisted, so there is clearly some upside there, even if I actually like him more in an off-the-ball role. Because even though Mitchell shot the rock really well this year, there is still definitely some reason to be a little skeptic. I will get into that a bit more later, but I prefer when Mitchell is catching and shooting rather than creating his own shot. I think he benefits from keeping the game simple. To me, Mitchell is a much better shooter when he plays away from the ball. He gets into his shot on the hop and on balance and has smooth, repeatable mechanics. Mitchell is a small guard at 6'2", so it is likely that he will not always get to play on the ball. Making these types of trades is vital, and, despite the stark contrast in 3-point percentages, I am a believer in Mitchell's shot. I don't expect him to shoot 45% from 3 again, but he should be able to open up the floor. So since he can drive and he can shoot the 3, that leaves the mid-range for Mitchell. Mitchell had a very solid junior season, making 43% of his 2-point jumpers. He has the ability to decelerate and then simply pull up with ease. Mitchell is shifty with his jumper, with a dynamic athleticism to his handle that when combined with his burst makes him a tough cover. It does not matter that Mitchell is 6'2", and yes, he probably looks a little smaller than that, but he keeps you on your toes at all times. Another thing to point out here, Mitchell's driving game and his pull-up ability makes him have great potential attacking closeouts. This here is an example of that. Along those same lines, Mitchell is at his best passing-wise in my opinion when he is getting into the lane and making decisions. Mitchell can put lots of pressure on the opponent's rim, be it with his 3-point shooting, pull-ups, or driving game. Because he already has all of those weapons in his arsenal, he receives a lot of attention that he can then leverage into playmaking for his teammates. When Mitchell drives and kicks the ball out, something good tends to happen. A lot of the time, he can spot and find open 3-point shooters on the wings or corners. That is the case against Iowa State here, as Mitchell collapses the defense and generates the open three. Of course, this is also a valuable tool attacking closeouts. Here, Mitchell attacks off the catch and should really get the assist. 
But in general, Mitchell is a pretty good passer. I think that he is very much a score first player, but he is a willing distributor. He grew in this respect during his final season at Baylor, as Mitchell averaged 5.5 assists per game while leading his team in assist percentage. Not only that, but Mitchell was okay from a turnover perspective. He only had 73 turnovers to his 165 assists, which is better than a 2 to 1 assist to turnover ratio. Mitchell is able to make quick decisions to find his teammates open, often disguising his passes by looking away or pointing his body in the wrong direction before the eventual dish. Of course, everything goes back to the open court, arguably Mitchell's strong suit. Much like when he takes up the ball himself, Mitchell is also a blur in transition as a passer. He can quickly jet up and down the floor and find his shooters. The important thing to watch out for here is that Mitchell is too quick to be caught, but he also slows down enough at the end of the play to make the right decisions. That means that he forces the mismatch by quickly getting the ball from one point to the other, but also later with his composure picking the final pass. Mitchell has the upside to be one of the best NBA players in transition at some point in the future if he keeps making plays like this. However, there are plenty of improvement points in Mitchell's game, starting with his finishing at the rim. Mitchell has all the physical tools needed. The athleticism, the Mack truck build, the strong first step, but he lacks finesse. So while he shot a very solid 65% at the rim, I am a little concerned. It seems like Mitchell often just wants to put his head down, charge towards the basket, and then figure it out when he gets there. Right now, he is also a little predictable to read. Mitchell loves to fake right and then explode down the left, but other than that, he does not have too many moves right now. Often, you will see Mitchell get to the rack and then toss up these wild, almost rushed shots. One of the problems that Mitchell encounters is that he is very much still a right-handed finisher, even if he has shown some ambidextrous flashes. Watch here against Iowa State, as Mitchell goes left and gets blocked when he tries to finish with the right hand. Another worry for me is just his size. Mitchell is listed at 6'2 by Baylor, which is small for a guard that plays like a 2 plenty of the time. Even if Mitchell can explode to the rim, he is often overwhelmed by pure size and length. This is reflected in his free throws in my opinion. Despite being so physically dominant, Mitchell shot just 2 foul shots per game. Right now, Mitchell is still not as skilled as you would hope at slowing down at the basket to either finish or draw the foul. One issue that I have with Mitchell's driving game is actually his handle. Sometimes, you are left wanting more from Mitchell's control of the ball. He still has a little bit of a loose, uncreative handle. He is usually shifty when he is pulling up into his shot, but Mitchell can get sloppy when he embarks on a rack attack. This point stands regardless of whether you see him as a 1 or 2 guard long term. It is not uncommon to see Mitchell's opponents poke the ball away or give him some trouble, but the one thing that worries me the most is that he cannot totally leverage his powerful athleticism without tightening his handle. Here against Kansas, Mitchell can't create separation with the first drive. He resets, but then loses control of the ball a little bit on the spin. Or against Auburn, Mitchell is trying to decelerate, probably into the pull-up too. But that tiny fraction where he loses control of the ball makes that impossible. And versus Oklahoma State, Mitchell has the ball poked away from him fairly simply, and then is second to the floor. Something else to watch out for is Mitchell's outside shooting. Like I said earlier, I buy into the shot. Maybe a bit more catching and shooting than pulling up, but still. I think that the mechanics are smooth and quick, and that Mitchell can get his shot off in a variety of ways. However, there is always the possibility that Mitchell's junior season at Baylor was a one-off. If we look at his 3-point percentages before that, they were very much below average. Mitchell shot 29% from 3 in his freshman season, and followed that up with 32% his sophomore year. He has also never shot above 68% from the free throw line, making just 64% of his free throws this year. If Mitchell cannot make his threes, then he will not have as much space driving or attacking closeouts to then pull up or pass. Having this outside shot really gives his game the possibility to expand, but in all fairness, there is reason to believe that his shooting has just improved. Mitchell shot much better at a much higher volume this year while also commanding more attention than ever before. Either way, taking his size and how it opens up his game into account, 3-point shooting is a big key to Mitchell's NBA success. Another big area of improvement for Mitchell will be speeding up his game a little bit. When I say this, I'm not referring to his physical speed. Rather, Mitchell sometimes takes a long time to get into whatever he wants to do. He can be guilty of pounding the ball too much and stopping the flow of the offense. In this next possession, Mitchell is sizing up the Texas defense for a long time. You could argue that he is managing the game clock, but when the final result is an air ball, I am not too convinced. Here against Kansas, Mitchell is not trying to run seconds off the shot clock. 
He has the ball in his hands for a long time again, has no real space to drive to the rim, and turns the ball over. Finally, in a play that sums up this problem of Mitchell's, he really pounds the ball against West Virginia. He gets it, bounces it, gives it back, gets it back, and then, when he finally attacks, his handle still needs work, so the ball gets picked off and it leads to a West Virginia dunk. Of course though, there are times where putting the ball in Mitchell's hands simply works. For instance, watch here, but I think NBA teams will want to see him make quicker decisions more consistently rather than grinding things to a halt. Still, it's easy to see why Baylor did not mind giving the ball to Mitchell. Here, he takes up the entire possession basically for himself, even circling around the paint, but Mitchell then ends up making the huge pull-up three either way. Lastly, Mitchell still has to clean up his passing a little. He is still somewhat caught between guard positions, because he has the size of a 1, but plays more like a 2. We have seen some recent prospects like Tyrese Maxey and Kyra Lewis Jr. play like this to good success. Still, I want to see Mitchell continue to develop his playmaking. He can still struggle under pressure or not put enough zip on his passes. The first thing to know about Davion Mitchell on defense is that he is incredibly hard to beat off the dribble. Getting past Mitchell is difficult because of his mixture of athleticism and strength. Not only can he backpedal quickly and flip his hips to keep up with the attacker, but he is also strong enough to sustain contact. So even if Mitchell is smaller than most players he will come up against, he can still keep up with them laterally and physically. Mitchell had good numbers, averaging 2 steals per game in his junior season, but his impact goes beyond that. There is a reason why he was recognized as the Defensive Player of the Year in all of college basketball. For instance, watch here against Cade Cunningham. Mitchell can take the bump, and then he forces Cunningham to turn the ball over. Or here, in a rematch against Oklahoma State, Mitchell once again shadows all of Cunningham's movements. The projected number one pick can't get any daylight against him, and Mitchell ends up poking the ball away, leading to a fast break for Baylor. Finally against Kansas, Mitchell makes himself hard to beat off the spin, and makes the Jayhawks attacker cough the ball up. Mitchell makes a tangible difference on the defensive end of the basketball. He is engaged, energetic, alert, and is willing to put his body on the line for the sake of the team. Mitchell plays with great toughness, especially considering his size, so it was no surprise to see him take plenty of charges during his time in Baylor. Mitchell is really good at beating attackers to their spots, planning his feet, and establishing position first. He gets there quickly and decisively, forcing attackers to make a tough, split-second decision that they usually cannot adjust in time. Teammates should enjoy playing with him on defense, simply because of the package that he brings with his physical ability, discipline, and overall willingness. In the closing moments of a one-possession game here, Mitchell picks up full court and ultimately takes the charge on the drive. This is a big-time play from a big-time defender. There are times where this does not pay off, and Mitchell does get called for the block instead, but I do not mind too much. Like I said, I prefer to focus on the sheer amount of effort. Mitchell's toughness extends to all the little things that he does to help his team win. One example is this big chase down block against Texas Tech, but I thought that the game that best summed up this part of Mitchell's defense was Baylor vs Oklahoma State. Mitchell had a really complete performance against the Cowboys on the defensive end. He was constantly doing the dirty work in situations that seemed hopeless. However, Mitchell ended up getting something out of them. Whether he was fronting the post against a bigger man and coming up with a steal, or simply rushing back to get a block, he was all over the floor. So does Mitchell have any blind spots defensively? Well, the biggest one to me is his size. Mitchell does a lot of things well. He is disciplined, gets down in a stance, is fluid enough to move his hips from side to side, and his quick footwork. However, at the end of the day, there is only one thing he cannot overcome. Mitchell is 6 foot 2, and at 22 years old, he will not keep growing. So despite all of Mitchell's great defensive gifts, the truth eventually is that he will be overwhelmed by size at times. He has to overcompensate that with his physicality, which can lead to foul calls against him. Other times, Mitchell puts in a good defensive shift, and it does not pay off because the opponent can simply shoot over him, such as here against Cade Cunningham. This is not a problem exclusive to Mitchell. A lot of NBA guards suffer from this to different degrees. In some cases, they can overcome it through their offensive production. In others, the size is not as significant, because they keep putting in the work on the basics to become good NBA defenders. I am hopeful that Mitchell will be in that latter category. As we have seen, he has the tools and understanding. It's just that there will probably be a little bit of an adjustment period for sure.
Now, I'm seeing a lot of people mention Davion Mitchell as a potential top 10 pick, and while I am quite high on his skill set, I can't get there myself. I see him more as a late lottery pick, and that's for a few reasons. The first thing that I need to get out of the way is that I am a true believer in all of Mitchell's NBA abilities, or at least the potential for him to have those NBA abilities. That means his pull-up shooting, which I buy into, his assists, which I buy into even though his playmaking still needs some tightening, and of course, his athleticism and the driving game that depends on it. In an NBA setting, I believe that Davion Mitchell has all the tools needed for him to thrive, be it getting into the lanes to drive to the rim, pulling up from deep, or I think that he will eventually be able to play in the pick and roll. However, my main concerns with him are one, his size, he's only 6 foot 2 but he looks smaller than that, and you can really tell on both ends of the floor at times. His handle is also an issue for me, I just think that he really needs to tighten it, especially once again it goes back to his size at 6 foot 2, but I think that his handle really needs some work. Teams will probably want to see him play more the 1 rather than an undersized 2, so I think that he will need to make progress in that department. And 3, like I mentioned in the video, there is still a possibility that the shot percentages this year were a one-off. After all, I do think that Mitchell improved, but such a stark contrast definitely raises some eyebrows. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, make sure to leave a comment telling me what you think of Davion Mitchell, and if you enjoy the channel, if you want to see more content, make sure to subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you guys next time.